forward so this is what we're going to do okay right today we're going to be looking at Zvezda's reasonably new about three months old now uh, C-130H Hercules now we've all been waiting for a decent Hercules for ages uh, we have the Italieri version there was a version from Airfix years and years ago, all with raised panel lines. Um, in today's market, they're not up to date. They're not what we would, they were all need rescribing. They're different, uh, not very accurate. So now Zvezda has released this beauty. Oh, get the windows of the thing out of the way. Now this, hopefully it's going to be a great kit i haven't looked at it i haven't opened it she's still sealed so we'll have a look at that in a few moments first up what's on the bench at the moment which i did a, a review a couple of weeks ago now of the osprey the hobby boss 148 osprey and she is now all in primer uh, she went together extremely well there's work to do to her still after the prime has gone on that's why we prime so we can see the faults that we've created so now it's to get rid of those faults she as I said she went together very very well uh, when did I start this last Tuesday the date is the 27th so it been the Tuesday before we're looking about a week's work there um, here and there bits and pieces and although you can see the size of it with that there's the prop one of the props they are mahusive so looking good and hopefully fingers crossed if this horrible horrible bug goes away we can get to Telford this year and that will be our display on the Outglad stand with fingers crossed Toes crossed, everything crossed. Okay, right, so there she is again. We'll uh, take it down onto the bench, have a look, go through the what's bits and pieces, see what we think. Um, I do live close, as most of you know on these videos. I live 40 miles from Mildenhall, so I tend to see the Strix aircraft in the summer every night in the winter obviously not because they fly after tea they do their drops at Skullthorpe Watton, I don't think they do Watton anymore uh, looking out refueling tests and everything else that they do locally so I've seen them a lot of them before uh, we live in the I live in the Waveney Valley between um, the, the area of Beckles and Bungie which is they tend to fly low, straight, straight down the valley. So I see them quite regularly and very close up when you get up to the Saints, which is Flixton, uh, where most of the 8th Air Force was based in the UK during World War Two, in this area anyway. Um, Flixton, Horham, bits and pieces. Uh, you've got Seathen. They fly all around here using those places as, as directionals. Anyway enough of that let's take it down I'll set up again take it down get on with it and let's have a look see what we got from Zvezda this time here we go right so here we are down on the bench um, I just like to put out a big shout out to Robert Bunn from Alclad 2 and thank him for the kit this was purchased from Hannant's Retail price is $44.95, which, considering the size of the aircraft, that's not a bad kit. Not Sorry, not a bad price. Excuse me. 
it's going to be 40 uh, centimeters long so you're looking at what is that 12 16 inches roughly very nice we have beautiful box art with the um, American version on top this is the ANG Oklahoma City with the uh, Red Indian head on it looking good so we've got decal options of American Polish Korean Japanese and British so obviously I'll probably make the British one this I've never built one never built a Hercules in my life as I said I've seen them buzzing around all the time uh, I've never been interested in the Italiari version but this new Zvezda one Zvezda in one second second looks a brilliant kit so we'll hopefully we'll have to see how we go around right let me just set this bit up put that on for a second right round the box so we've got our kit number which is I can't see it on there now kit number is 7321 we've got our paint callouts in Zvezda and Tamaya showing our decal sheets load of blurb in Russian don't feed the small children as per usual end of the box is just a picture with our box number on the other side is what we're going to get so was I right yeah so we have oh can't focus 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 please there you go so we have our US Air Force our Polish Air Force Republic of Korea Air Force Japanese and our British Air Force now this is the older version the H is the older version of of the um, Hercules been around many many years fantastic aircraft love it to bits and then we go back to the front let's just make sure we've got nothing blurting us out and we've got a picture of what you could build it up to looking around it looks reasonable as a kit so all good and we've got more blurb in Russian and then it takes a little bit about it uh, the C-130 is the most popular Western military aircraft designed and built in the USA this plane has been in production longer than any other aircraft in history and forms the backbone of military air transport of the United States, NATO members and many other countries the most popular variant is this the C-130H its maiden flight was 64 so this aircraft if I built the original model that come you know that would be built is a year older than me and I'm 55 so it'll be 56 years old this year blimey 57 years old this year Re and regular production started in 65 so the year of my birth the aircraft was equipped with new reinforced wing box improved brakes new aircraft electronics and a power plant with two 56 A15 turbo props up to now more than two and a half thousand planes of various variants have been manufactured obviously the ones that I know are the Talons the gunships excuse me the general transport what have you uh, my cousin married a gentleman from the US Air Force and he was um, load ma loadmaster or crewmaster aboard one of the special operation groups um, Hercules is out of Mildenhall so I have a great interest in this aircraft although this won't build up into that hopefully hopefully later on there'll be a version come up through anyway look this is still sealed not been opened this actually only arrived a couple of hours ago perhaps and I haven't opened it I've not watched any reviews I've got no clue to what's in the box or anything of the type so this is just me looking So we open her up and straight on the inside we have uh, let me just get that focus for you we have some other Zvezda aircraft beautiful looking aircraft as usual we've got the SU-57 the 29 the 27 UB flanker lovely aircraft I've never built a Zvezda aircraft so this will be very interesting for me too and if we just open the box we're straight in 
So this is how it looks. We've got a bit of paper in every language that I can't read. English is my level, and American, and Australian, obviously. We've got our decal sheet in with our glazing. Mm, not brilliant, but we'll let them off this time. Multiple screw bags, which we'll just put to one side for a moment. A bit more blurb. Take this out of the way. We have our instructions with another large sheet. Put that to one side again for safety reasons. We'll bring it in so that you can see what we're looking at. Hopefully, you'll be able to see that okay. And just pull it out a little bit. All right. Color call outs and paint charts. Right, so. That's all, it's got a stamp on it. Number two, I have no re no un understanding why that's there. I have no idea. So that's a new one. And we've got our usual blurb, right straight into it. Well, get her in, there you go. So we've got our sprues, sprue layouts, up to what we F, G, H, our sprues look good. What? How to use a knife? How to use a pair of tweezers? Cool. Hope you know that by now. Anyway, straight in the cockpit. See, look a bit basic, but remember we can't gonna see much through that windscreen. Those that windscreen's tiny. We're straight into the deck. Um, quite well detailed to be truthful. What's in there? Even the crew bed, side wall paneling going down. Seats going down, Look reasonably good with decals going on them. Our instrument panel with a decal. To be honest, in this scale, this size, this all it needs. I'm not worried about um, detail and sets for this. This isn't going to need it. It's different when you've got an open cockpit 132nd F14, for instance, you need all the detail you can get. But for, for a 172nd Hercules, although it'll be 16 inches long, not a problem. You've got crew figures, and they all look slightly different. If they are molded slightly different, that's pretty cool. With posable parts, posable arms and legs. More side panel work going in the crew at the dashboard or the, cock, the instrument panel. You've got oxygen canisters going in, your crew figures going down, your bulkheads going on. You're joining up um, your deck going together. Your doors with the windows putting in. I won't bother about that. Um, you've got this wonderful stuff for smaller windows, which is absolutely fantastic. Right, then you've got your bulkhead and your cockpit system going in with a ladder on the deck. Now it wants you to cut parts. Hmm, that's telling me there's going to be different variants coming out because they won't make it that length. Obviously later versions were made longer, so that would be the obvious answer to that. Uh, that's me assuming, not knowing. Okay, again, cut for painting, versions one and four, no issues. Doors going in with the windows going in again, crystal clear. Bits and bumps going on. You can start at work on, on the, a, looking at this, they are for, just have a quick look. That, yep, that's for the uh, wheel, of the, uh, the undercarriage nacelles. The they are popped out as such, a bit like the C17. So that they're a bit wider, a bit more room to get in there, and also that leaves the cargo more cargo room inside. More glazing going down, and obviously, depending on the versions you're using, you're gonna to have to keep looking at this. What I generally do is go through the instructions with a highlight pen so I make sure I know which bit I'm looking at. Okay, you've got your seating going down. Looking quite good. Detail work going in. Pipe work all going in, and as you know, 
in a Hercules there's a heck of a lot of pipe work I have been in one so I do know there's a lot of pipe work in the ceilings and um, that's going on again it needs to be cut to length which is a pain in the butt but that's one of those things we put up with more doors going together opposite sides obviously then you've got detailing inside the cabin the other side uh, uh, wheel in the cells going on undercarriage and cells more bits and bobs going on the rear end seats going in again on that side another bulkhead going in on the rear ready for the doors then the wings going together okay so you got to make a couple of holes now if that goes together look like, look like it goes together that's a bit of a worry um, the wingspan on this, if that's 60 inches long, the wingspan is going to be possibly a bit more. Droop possibly. I think if if it's if it goes like this and it does look like it, having a quick yep yeah, there. Then perhaps some plastic card run through, just to give it that little bit extra support. A couple of notches put in there, plastic card through. Away we go. It should help it out. Then we've got our exhaust systems going together. The turbo prop going on, your engine nacelles going together, everything going in those engine nacelles, the exhaust system, both sides, four of them all together. Then we're on to our fuel tanks, and the engine nacelles going on to the wing. Okay, I'm not sure whether I'd want to put those on there before I put the, the wing on at the top there, unless you do that little trick of using the plastic card or some sort of a support that goes through there your canopy going in or the cockpit canopy going in with loads of 20 gram, 5 grams of weight going in there fill it up make as much as you can out of it and if you've got more room underneath that part fill that up too okay so you're putting together your, your rear horizontal stabilizers there's no moving um, flaps slats rudders ailerons whatever on this which is a bit of a shame but if you want to, of course you can do it. A bit of work. But yeah, that's looking okay. Then you come into the undercarriage, weighted wheels, which is nice. Uh, you've got bits of bobs going down. And the uh, rear undercarriage going in. A little bit more pipe work. Um, standard work at the rear on the rear of the door. Then you've got your undercarriage doors going together. Your rear doors going together. Weight wheel at the front as well. Your props, um, oh, uh, what do you call them? Prop covers. That's all I'm going to call them for now. My mind's gone dead. Going together, building them up. Then you've got the doors going on. You're opening the hydraulics. The rear door that goes up and the one that comes down. Your wheels going on. Your undercarriage doors going on. We always leave that to the last. Props going together doors going in lumps and bumps going on the top we've got a door open so we can see inside the area just having a quick there you go. that's the opposite part of it and then on the back your refuel and probe ready to go last part that I'll ever put on because I'll knock it off know what I mean then we have our walkway decals, or basically our stencils set up all the way through, looking quite nice to be honest. Okay, right, we'll put that to one side. We'll come in with our colour scheme. So this is the traditional um, colour scheme for the Air National Guard. It looks just trying to see what they call it uh, grey light blue mm. they do it in Tamiya um, it's also in the Russian Zvezda colours which I've never ever seen um, to be honest I don't use any of those I have lots of little pots literally for hand brush work detailing work um, I can't remember the last time I put acrylic through my airbrush and I don't think I will in the near future either or the long term future. Everything we're going to use 
is Alclad 2 mil spec which every color that, that is available is made for the, this aircraft to be honest there's everything okay so you've got the dark or the, the medium gray or the gray light blue as they like to call it I think that's what they're going to call out on that it doesn't actually say but anyway do you know I can't see anywhere where it says what color XF31 actually it's calling out for XF31 Oh, that's a decal. I do apologise. Is that a decal? X31. No, that's X53 grey, which is what medium dark grey. I haven't got it. I don't have that one here with me. But that will be probably a gunship grey, maybe a little bit lighter grey. Okay. Right. So the Polish, which is definitely a darker grey. Then you've got the South Korean, which is your jungle. What I would call a jungle um, camo scheme grey, khaki and green which is nice this is actually greys which is blue grey, dark blue grey and grey for the Japanese version I do love that I like anything like that and then we've got good old British one which is the one I'll be doing um, <laughs> the decalant they put on this you can tell it's a Russian company because the decalant that they've used by the looks of it I'll make sure in a minute, but uh, it looks as though it could be a colour, that um, a, a decor which might be offensive to some, but not to us boys. Right, let's have a look at the decals. All in one bag with the clear sprue. We'll put that over there for a second. We'll take a look at the decals because they're there. Right, let's bring you in and turn it on just so that focuses nicely. There we go. Okay, so the decal sheet. The usual what we do. Nice flat, clean decal sheet. Very shiny, very glossy. So you got to get your gloss coats right up to get rid of the anything that might be nasty. So you've got Japanese Hiramaru, Hinamaru's. Yeah, that is the one. There's the de the decal that I'm a little bit I'm not prude by any means, but to have on my aircraft, oh lord, it's the fat slags. Bit dodgy. But hey oh, that's what's going on and that's the end on it. Looking at the colours, there's no bleed through on what is the uh, no looks okay to me. It looked like there was a little bit of bleed on the red and the blue. If it was, it's not a problem. I'll clad do those colours, so I'm not bothered. Yep, they're alright. Doesn't it says it's there's to print them, so who am I to disbelieve them? Okay, while we have that, we'll have the large decal sheet. Uh, clean, again, very shiny. Now this, by the looks of it, let me just take you out because this is rather large. It's A4. Here we go. Um, with the walkways, this is all carrier film. So what I would do is lay these down get them so they're fairly settled and then get rid of this decal film this carrier film in the middle whether it be the yellow or the black everything looks quite nice quite sharp is it readable these ones here are not readable but in 172 I suppose it matters yep not too bad at all put that to one side then as they're out we'll go into the uh, clear parts okay now I can imagine some people moaning the fact that this is not the D that they would have liked as a um, how can they put it a form so it goes in and so you can easily put it in properly and sh clean it up let's be truthful this isn't going to be a pain in the ass. it's going to fit hopefully they are nice and clear 
it will slip in everything is near the edge I groove yes yeah, that'll be okay so I mean liquid crystal clear is, uh, micro crystal clear is going to fill any gaps if there is any and that'd be easy to clean up with a cotton wool bug but the actual glazing itself looks very very nice and very very clear right let's put that going underneath there I'm trying to be a little bit careful I don't like it when they come into bags like this I prefer everything single bagged but this will be the first Zvezda model I've ever made right so we're on to our styrene So here we go. Put that on the floor. Make sure we're in the line. We'll have a look at how is that caught in there? Like that. Okay. Right. Just uh, taking in to see what I can see, as you'd expect. Now, the first thing that chucks up to me is there's no rivet detailing. The panel lining is fine, but it's crisp. It looks very nice. It doesn't fade out anywhere. Again, the rudder is one piece. If you want to cut that off, do some work, get it done, fine. None of this moulding on the side, so it's easier so you don't damage the outside of the model. So you have to clean that up nicely. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. Let's be honest, it's a £44 kit, or £45 kit. It's not um, your £100 Osprey, let's say. So we're dealing with something that's a little bit different. But yeah it looks good the lines are all there looks very very nice on that part Oop, uh, noisy let's have a look at this piece again very nicely done to be honest now right okay although these are finely done and very nicely done these ones are deeper it's very difficult to show you let me see if the camera will pick it up. Right, on this, come on, focus. Right. Okay. Just get it, get it, go on, get it. Right, there. I don't think that was going to pick it. I ain't going to pick it up. The left hand side of the fuselage looks deeper engraved than the right hand side which is a little bit disappointing but not a problem we can soon use our Tamiya scriber get them sorted so we're modelers not builders that's what I keep telling myself that's what I got told so right on to the next bag oh before we just do that let's go on the inside of this I forgot on the inside you've got nice formers little bit of a stress skin mark on the inside which is nice nicely detailed doesn't look too bad ejection pin marks are actually out of the way so it's not going to show and look quite good okay now we'll get back to this bag I don't know what that is. okay well, there is only three bags but multiple screws okay our engine nacelles um, looking extremely nice these are nicely engraved very good looking quite like those there's nothing really to tell you about them they're just plastic covers from that then we have our prop blades So we've got our props 
they look tiny. Considering the size of the plane, they look so small. It's these are part of the exhausts. We've got the fronts of the engines themselves or the nacelles. You got your compressor blades for your turbo prop. Bits of excuse me, bits of piping. Very nicely done. And there's two of those to go to one side. Wings. Right now, I noticed this when I was. Um, looking earlier and hmm, in the instructions yeah they're gonna fit together quite odd so yeah plastic card give it some strength run a few bits of plastic card through here or want well, something that's gonna come along to help that if that's a butt joint which it does look like and it's a bit dodgy if it is and you got your there your seats that's the outside, they look quite nice, nothing wrong with those. Again, the engraving is superb, but like a um, yeah, lack of rivets. That could be a problem, I'm afraid. Okay, you got the other side wings again, looking very nice. No different, just opposite to those ones, really. And looking good, as I said, plastic car is going to be your friend on this, I believe. Right, final bag. Multiple screws. See them and take you out a little bit uh, like so. Right, I'll take those two off. Put that on the floor. Right, here we go. So we've got our rear doors all looking good inside um, panels. For protection for the, the guys. You've got your roof section with all your pipe work. Again, you've got to chop that at some point. And there's your marks to chop these. Not sure what they are, but we'll find out later. Date. You've got your deck, your bulks, yep, uh, bulkheads, all looking really nice. A few bits of pieces. Your doors. Nothing looks stressed. Nothing looks so it's been forced. You've got your bits and bobs for your aerials. All looking nice, more pipe work, really nicely detailed pipe work. Everything looking good. There you can't. For the price of this kit, why moan, to be honest. Okay, right. So, the cockpit. As I said, on a kit this size, on an aircraft of this type, you're not going to be, be able to peer into the cockpit and see loads of detail. So it's not an issue. We're looking at the cockpit itself. There are some ejection pin marks, but they're not going to be seen. Would you worry about them? If you're going to show up, I guess, yeah. But anyway, that's the way it is. You've got your three noses, all different types for the three types that are there. More bulkheads, your fuel tanks, external fuel tanks, more parts for the cockpit. You've got your little guys. Now, on the picture, they all look different. In real life, yeah, they're different. Pretty well done. All poseable and looking good. Your seats, very basic. Again, if you're going to put these guys in, you ain't going to do nothing. Me, I'll just put some seat belts over the top. And away we go. Make them out of tomato tape. That'll be absolutely fine. That's that. And here comes the part that's going to, oh god, yeah, so it's going to have to be um, styrene card put through to strengthen that up. That's all I'll do, just to make it a little bit stronger. 
your horizontal stabilizers are looking absolutely great again no stress work on them no stress in the plastic your weighted wheels which is brilliant these look huge compared to the aircraft itself and the parts I've been looking at your undercarriage nacelles again looking good nothing on the inside you're not going to see in there anyway when you look up so it doesn't matter doors other parts and pieces this is the only bit that does concern me as I said we are modelers sorry this is the only part that concerns me that was off screen um, we are modelers so used a bit of plastic card straight in undercarriage is very basic but you're not going to see it. It's basically up in the aircraft, in the wells. So there you go. Anyway, that was the 172nd. Let me get the box up. There we go. Huge, great box. And just pull it out to see you can see it. 172nd Zvezda, American heavy transport plane C-130H Hercules. Um, as an up-to-date Hercules of an old variant I think it's quite good um, when the Osprey is finished in the next three or four days, five days this will be next on the bench I'm dying to have a go at this and I will do it now I had a comment on one of my videos mm, last couple of days um, moaning that what's the good of an inbox review and saying it doesn't show you the fit, it doesn't show you what anything. Blah, 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 blah. Moany, moany, groany, groany. Why sit and watch it, and then waste ten minutes typing out a moan? Don't bother. You'll get blocked. It's as easy as that. You don't have to watch it. You don't have to see it. If it's not what you want to see, don't switch it on. Simple. But anyway, I'm Mark Davy. In association with Old Cloud Two some of the best airbrush paints on the planet i hope you've enjoyed the review and hopefully we'll have something again very very soon thanks for watching see you soon bye bye for now